so I wanted to talk about characteristic subgroups today. Uh, now you might wonder that okay why don't you first tell us what is a group? Ah, uh, you probably know that. Maybe you can tell us what is a subgroup after that. Maybe you know that as well. And then we can talk about characteristic subgroups. So this is like jumping in the middle. But nevertheless we can always have some fun. So let's talk about characteristic subgroups right away. Uh, suppose we have a group G and we consider all the maps of the group to itself. So these are special maps. Let's call them phi. There is a special map from a group to itself which is called an automorphism. So what is an automorphism? Ah, we will come back to that again. So for the moment, let's pretend we know what is an automorphism. It's a special type of map from a group to itself. And uh, what it does is it moves around. It moves around the points in G. Well, any map from a set to itself, uh, if it if it's doing something, then it will at least move around some of the points in the set. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say if you look at the real line. Let's suppose this is a real line. And you define a map from the real line to itself. Uh, let's define that map by uh, x square. So basically this map is uh, squaring the number. Now if you take the point 0, uh, 0 is curious because 0 will be will not be moved. So it's a fixed point of this map. Uh, so it's a fixed point of this map. What happens to let's say negative 1? Well negative 1 gets moved to 1. Negative 2 gets moved to 4. So if you look at this map, you will see that everything to the left of 0 is jumping to the right. And everything to the right, so 1 is another fixed point. So if you square 1, you will get 1 itself. Let's say this is 1. But everything else is, suppose this is, this is the point 2, it will jump to 4. If you have another point 3, it will jump to 9 and so on. So uh, these points are moving all over the place. That's what uh, um, uh, any, any map from a space to itself does. Uh, so it moves around certain points. It may fix certain points like this, uh, this point here, um, 0 and 1. So when you are thinking about a map from a space to itself, uh, it's a good way to think about, good, good, it is a good thing to think about how it is moving the points around. Okay, So here is a group G and uh, we are looking at a map from the G, group G to itself. And it's a natural question that what is this map doing to the points? Uh, is it moving the points too much? Is it fixing some of it? Uh, what's going on here? So every map will be different, of course. Every map will do something different. So, um, so we will be looking at some general properties of maps from a group to itself. So let's draw a picture. Uh, maybe we have a group G like this. So at this time, you probably understand that uh, the group G is definitely a set of points or symbols. Uh, there are a couple of properties. Um, for example, if you there is a way to combine elements in the group in this set. So if A and B are elements of this set G, then there is an operation usually denoted by star such that A star B is also in G. Uh, and then there is for each A we have an A inverse such that A times A inverse 
is equal to A inverse times A equals to the identity element. And this is E is usually the denoting letter for identity element. And what is an identity element? Well, you multiply that with any other element from the left or from the right, you get the same element back. That's what an identity element does. So a group, a set G with all of these properties is known as a group. So in a way, a group is a world in itself. It's a world in itself. Okay. Uh, what might happen is that inside a group, if you look at a subset, that subset, let's call it H, might be a group itself. Now, all subsets of G might not be a group. Remember, in order to be a group, you have to combine two elements in the subset combine them to get a third element in that subset only. Also, H must contain the identity element. H must contain the inverse of each of its members. So, any subset of G by default cannot be a subgroup. It is a very special property to be a subgroup. So, you can look into the definitions in, the, in any standard book, but uh, for the moment, and notice that something very simple is being defined here. We just have a set, we have uh, points in the set, and then we have a, uh, a rule to combine any pair of elements in the set. And when you combine two elements in the set, you get another element in that set only. And then you have the inverse element corresponding to each element in the set, and you have the identity element. So it's kind of simple. Now, Coming back to this map phi, we have a map phi from G to G. Uh, we want something special from this map. When we are investigating this map phi, uh, we want to know, is it true that some part of this group G are fixed by this map phi? So that's the central question that we have. So here is a question. Is the map phi from G to G fixing some subgroups of it? This would be a very powerful statement about the map phi. And here is where the characteristic subgroups come in they have this beautiful property that uh, they remain fixed or invariant uh, under any map phi from G to G. So I'm lying a little bit. So this map phi is called uh, an, is an automorphism. It is a special type of map uh, which maintains the group structure and all that means is phi of a times b if is equal to phi of a times phi of b. And all maps are not automorphism. So for example, here is an example, or rather a counter example. Uh, and we come back to our example of squaring. Suppose the group G is the group of real numbers, all real numbers. And the binary operation is just addition, our familiar addition. And uh, so each element, let's say two, has an inverse that's negative two. So each element has an inverse, and of course there is an identity element which is zero. It's a very trivial sort of an example. And let's look at the map phi, which is squaring phi of x equal to x square. And let's check if this condition holds. And um, 
So let's take any two elements a and b, combine them a plus b square and let's check if it's equal to squaring them individually and then adding them up. Well, we all know this is not true, right? So squaring is not uh, an automorphism from R to R. Uh, well, we actually automorphism needs a little bit more. It needs to be a bijection. So an automorphism is a bijection from a group to itself such that phi of a star b is equal to phi of a star phi of b. So th these are the type of maps which preserves the group structure and hence when we are studying group theory, these are the maps we are very interested in. Okay, so coming back to our picture, remember we were interested in characteristic subgroups. So if we have A, uh, let's say if we have G and then if we have its uh, subgroup H and if we are looking at the map from G to G, Let's, say, let's, let's draw another copy of G and let's take the subgroup H here. So it's just a copy of G so it will also have a copy of H. Now what's happening here is that H is being mapped to itself. Now points inside H can be moved around. So maybe the point here goes to the point here and things can move around inside H but as a whole this as a set H is mapped to itself so all the image points from here are inside H so H remains invariant under phi now mathematicians are very, uh, very interested in things that do not change because those are the things that give us some property of this, uh, of the underlying set and the maps that we are looking at. So what is a characteristic subgroup? Well, first collect all automorphisms means all maps with that special property that preserves the group, group structure, all automorphisms of G to itself. So all, there are many, many such functions probably possibly. So collect all of them inside a set. Let's call that set ought G. So this is the collection of all automorphisms of a group to itself. Now, Suppose G is the group and H is a subgroup of it. So H is a subgroup of G which has the special property that phi of H is equal to H for any phi from odd G. So no matter which automorphism you use, these are like the super invariant subsets or subgroups of G. And this is this is very beautiful because these are these groups, this H that we have found, these subgroups are highly fixed or highly invariant inside the group G. So they can lead us to some special property of the group G. We will see that but for the moment such a group such a subgroup H is known as characteristic subgroup. 